ordination today is an ordination to the diaconate. It's not an ordination to the priesthood. It's a transitional stage. It's not like the permanent deacons who are ordained and it finishes there. They are beginning today the final journey of their formation. And that is why I am talking directly to them. So dear beloved brothers and sisters, since these are sons who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. That's why I made this remark in the beginning that today is the ordination to the diaconate. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help first and foremost the bishop. That's why I'm happy to be here, able to ordain you today, dear sons in Christ. And you will also not only assist me as the bishop, but you will also assist priests in the ministry of the word. Mr. Zobalegile, a cool from the cold, Ushumaela Izu, Kubami. That is all what is important for now for you to exercise this ministry of the word. And that's why the deacon is the one who reads the gospel during Holy Mass. Even when you leave the Christmas service, the deacon has the power and the authority to read to the people of God the word of God. Secondly, your ministry today is that of assisting at the altar. That's why deacons are actually supposed to be serving at the altar, because that is their work. The third task that you are being ordained to fulfill is that of charity. As you have read in the readings today, Showing themselves, that is, yourselves, to be servants to all. As ministers of the altar, you will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the Lord's body and blood to be faithful. So you're not there for the deacons to replace the head of priests. <laughs> the deacon then go away and say, oh, I have a deacon now. No, you are ordained to assist the priest. It can happen, of course, that one day the priest is not there, then you are doing all what we are saying here. But your task is to assist the bishop and the priest. Furthermore, it will be the duty, your duty, at the bishop's direction to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in holy doctrine. Therefore, when you preach the word, it's not only preaching, but it's also teaching, catechetics. You will have to take you know, a great active role to see to it that doctrine is passed on to those who want to become members of the church. Assist the catechist. 
and then you will preside over public prayer. You will also administer baptism and then assist at and the blessing of marriages. If they are marriages at all. I usually ask priests when they come around for conservation how many marriages a year has father and very blushingly sometimes he says two, three, four, ten. Well, in my brochure target, this means they think they do not practice how to solemnize their marriages. Another task which you are being ordained to fulfill is to bring the article to the dying and to conduct funerals. See, when you are in the hospital, you as good people, Nick Wooler, when this kind of report in our father, you see, this part of this is better, you have to think of him, and the same is sacrament. You don't report to priests, and hence you don't get you know, the sacraments, you, know, you don't get you know, that strength which the deacon can bring to you by bringing Holy Communion, by praying over you, and that you may recover. Baba Masamu Sacramento, you know, he's coming to send you home already. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord show country, you know, go home for you. Says, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You, know, you have to frequently inform the priest that so and so is in the hospital. The deacons are there to bring communion to the sick and to assist you know, the dying, even though. Deacons do not anoint the sick. Really. You are not a day to anoint the sick. You are anointed to pray for vision, to console the sick, to pray with the sick, to bring back hope and trust in God that the person who is sick will return. Consecrated, therefore, by the laying on of hands that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more closely to the service of the altar, these deacons will then perform works of charity in the name of the bishop and the pastor or the parish priest where you will be assigned. With the help of God, they are to go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. They are calling it a service. So now, my dear sons in Christ, you are there today to be raised to the order of the diaconate. Already the Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do the same. You are ordained to serve. You are not ordained to come back to go and look at Mama Post and Musa Abad. You are ordained to serve after the model of our Lord Jesus Christ. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. No, you are ordained today, you know, to serve the people from the heart. Montreal and the people, you know, already by dealing with that person, you feel good. Therefore, you are supposed to serve and do the will of God from the heart, not just from the nature. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. 
since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving for God. Since by your own free will, presumably you are not being obeyed here because you want to please somebody, your parents, the community, the bishop, you are here by your own free choice. You present yourselves today for the order of the diaconate. Therefore, you should be men of good reputation. Filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit. You see, Buddha is good, you know, you are clever, you are clever. No, that wisdom which is the fear of the Lord always in front of you. Be filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit, as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. You will exercise your ministry committed to the celibate state. Know that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compared, therefore, by the sincere love of Christ, the Lord, and embracing this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. You will free yourself, therefore, my dear brothers, more completely for the service of God and the His people, and minister more effectively in the work of spiritual rebirth. Who need to be revived, who need to have this spiritual rebirth. And therefore, when you do house visits and the visiting of people who are no longer coming to church, you will try to bring back that you know, desire that they should also be part of the community. Firmly, therefore, rooted and grounded yourself in faith, you are to show yourself chaste and beyond the approach before God and man, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and of the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourself, therefore, to be turned away from the hope offered by the gospel. Now you are not only hearers of this gospel, but also you are ministers of this gospel. Holding the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, expressed by your actions to the word of God, which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people, brought to life by the Spirit, may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear Him say to you, Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy 